Welcome into the Vegas Squares podcast, where we discuss all things sports and sports betting. Presented by 12 Ounce Sports Radio. And welcome into the next edition of the Vegas Squares podcast, the Picks and Chatter episode. We are sitting here in studio. It's a packed house today. We got uh, Spikes here, but he doesn't like college football, so we don't worry about him for the first half of this show. We got Token Tony, and we have a guest guest picker this week. We got uh, we call him Money Matt, Money Making Matt, Big Money Matt Mooring in the house. Big Money Matt Mooring in the house. That is a tongue twister right there. It is. <laughs> so. Uh, so Matt, tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, I know that you and I go back and forth. We talk college football and pros every week, uh, betting and everything. And, uh, I tell you what, this guy did pretty well in the hockey, cleaned up in the cup finals. I'll tell you that. I did. I love the hockey season. That's actually the, my favorite time. You got the hockey, uh, season going on, hockey playoffs going on, NBA playoffs going on. Baseball is just getting started. That is a great time to go. Just like here. We got the baseball playoffs coming up. Yeah. Football is just getting on. Hockey's going to be here. Yeah, you know, in a couple months, we're going to have a multitude of ways to lose our money. Yeah, <laughs> and if you want to sprinkle a little action on basketball, I guess so. Yeah, that's true. That is true. It is an option. And if we have any money left, we can always go play poker. So problems, <laughs> problem solved. Problem yep. solved. Yeah, exactly. So uh, all right, well, let's. Uh, we've got a big slate. Even with a lot of the canceled or postponed games, there's still a big slate of good action in college football this weekend. And uh, let's just start right into it. Uh, you know. Let's start with Oklahoma because uh, they lost their starting running back, Anderson. They're also still an 18-point favorite, 17 and a half, no matter where you look. And uh, they're they're going into Iowa State, which handed them their only loss, their only non-playoff loss last year. And uh, 18 is a lot to cover. I know that Kyler Murray's looked very impressive, but I mean, we're talking FAU and UCLA, who are two programs who, you know, let's let's face it, aren't you know the creme de la creme. Not that Iowa State is, but big Big 12 matchups, you know, conference, anything goes. So. Uh, let's start with that game here on the slate. Uh, Oklahoma getting or giving 18 to Iowa State at this point. I currently kind of like the line. I I would lay the favorite in this. I think their quarterback's just good enough to push them over the threshold and cover the spread, even with their main running back out. So, yeah, I mean, Kyler Murray is able to to do things and and kind of masks you know Rodney Anderson being out, but. Uh, It'll be interesting to see. That's a lot of number. That's a big number to give up. It is a big number. This is a division game. This is a huge game for Iowa State. They pulled off some big upsets before. Like I said, Oklahoma's missing some personnel. It's a division road game. 18 is a lot of points. And uh, it has moved down half a point, so the, I think the public likes Iowa State. We're at 17 and a half now? Yeah. It's, that's, what, yeah that's, what, that's what this is. Yeah. Yeah, you can catch it you know, anywhere in that, in that realm. It opened up yeah, at uh, 19. So it actually, you're right, it's been trending downwards in favor of Iowa State at that point. Uh, you know, if you have, to, are you taking the strap off for this one? Uh, this is not on my bill. No. Nope. Yeah, neither me. But eh, see how it goes uh, tomorrow with some Friday games, and might sprinkle a little action on it. Yeah, I uh, I don't have this on my slate as well, but I have I do say I have a strong lean towards Iowa State. They are they brought back most of their team from last year that did beat Baker Mayfield and the Oklahoma sooner so i think not that i think i'm predicting a win here at this point but i do think 18 <laughs> points is a lot to cover you know three possessions at that point at home i'll uh i'm more of a guy who'll take points in that spot so not a bad money line stab though right there yeah what is it what is it rocking at right now uh, i don't know this only has points here <laughs> let's see a money line i gotta imagine with an 18 point spread the money line's gotta be uh, 800 or better nine six six seventy six seventy okay so oh, i was yes. wrong but still close yeah it's not a good it's not a bad stab at it you're absolutely right uh Game I'm very interested in this week. I don't have an actual play on it right now as we're recording, but uh, I may look at it later. Is Boise State and Oklahoma State? You got a G5 team in Boise State who's who's basically run through the competition the first two games, and Oklahoma State's looked good as well. Uh, this is a big, big test, especially with UCF, the other G5 team that is looking to either enter the playoff picture or the New Year's Six Bowl picture. Losing a game for UCF, you know, probably not going to get made up against North Carolina. This is a chance for Boise State as a two-and-a-half point dog to walk into Oklahoma State and beat one of the big boys and really cement their status early in the season as the team of the G5 to be in the playoff discussion or even in the New York Six discussion. Yeah, um, I don't think they're going to make that statement this week, though. I believe Oklahoma State's going to come off 
guns fired off in the beginning, put early points Is that a up. cowboy joke? Yeah, I mean, they got Pistol Pete as their mascot, so. <laughs> uh, I think they... Who unlocked the door when he knocked? They'll <laughs> probably only be able to score 65 points, so I'm not sure if that's going to be enough. <laughs> that might not be. I, I think Oklahoma State wins by about a touchdown or so, so they easily cover. I agree. I took him with the cover. I just think athletically and skill positions, wide receiver and on defense, I think they're just going to outmatch Boise State. I think that's going to be one of the premier games to watch. It's going to be very entertaining. Yeah, with the you know, with the exception of, you know, early when Chris Peterson was there and they were slaying giants like Oklahoma, they haven't really had a decided advantage or a really an ability to compete when they're not on that blue field. So yeah, I, I don't know if if they're going to have the talent or the depth, really. The depth is really where I see it, because they're very good, you know, f- you know, on their initial starting line. But I think Oklahoma State can rotate, you know, two, three guys deep, and especially on defense, like Matt's saying, that uh, eventually they'll just be able to wear them down. Um, I see this as a close game for a long time. Like, it sounds like you guys do as well. But uh, Oklahoma State, unfortunately, uh, well, or fortunately, I guess, for UCF, will uh, eventually take over and win this game. But... I've heard this new stat that uh, the P5 likes to throw out there, which is kind of driving me nuts, is, and I don't know if it would apply to Boise State, but if Boise State were to say, okay, we got a two-and-a-half point spread here, Boise State loses by a game-winning field goal, Oklahoma State kicks, do they, Boise State, get what, what the P5 likes to refer to now as the quality loss? Or is it because they're G5, they just say, oh, you had your chance, you know, go fuck off? I think a lot of it depends how Oklahoma State finishes their season, too. That's true, yeah. Yeah, um... I would say it's just written down as a loss, not a quality loss, and time to move on. I think so. It's just going to be a loss. They don't have too many other opponents like this facing this uh, this year, so this loss is going to be huge. Yeah, you know, winning, beating other you know, Division three schools. Who cares? Division three. Wow. Whatever. <laughs> Man, no love for the boys in blue. All yeah, right, go, well. We've been to Idaho. We know what it's like there. Yeah, that's true. There's not much. <laughs> yeah, the Walmart's the uh, the hot spot. Of... I mean, they go to Jackpot for fun. Come on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, Jackpot is fun. It's it a... is. It is. Yeah. Go to Jackpot. Just don't blink when you drive through. <laughs> yeah, you might miss it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, another game I, I find interesting. It's not necessarily the must-see TV like some of the games we're going to get into. Uh, Houston is laying one at Texas Tech here. A uh, couple of programs, Houston, another one, you know, in the AAC, who is looking to be in that discussion of the New Year's Six and potentially, uh, hopefully, getting in the discussion of the playoff. Um, it's not very often where you see this, you know, a Houston team who, I would say they're, you know, they're A-minus quality, you know, as a, as a team, you know, getting, or excuse me, giving points to a Big 12 opponent. Yeah, it just seems like a weird spot to have a line at right now right now Houston's minus one minus one and a half depends where you look I think they're faster than Texas Tech right now and I think they have a little more depth I think they win this game by a battlefield goal so I think that line's pretty accurate I think it's pretty hard this is one of the hardest games I think to make a prediction I think I would agree with that you don't I, mean, I would I agree with that. I oh, would you agree. would? Yeah. I would. Okay. I, I just, I'm looking at this game. I think the total is just the way to go. I see a lot of points. I see a lot of running up and down the field. Ball's going to be flying up and down. Yeah. Hey. That's a good uh, – yeah, what is the total on that one? I just had it here. 60, 67. Yes. Holy shit. Which is up there. But normally I found in Vegas uh, the lower totals go under and the higher totals go, go over. over. Yeah, yeah that's because fair. the actual variance of the scores is more than what Vegas will allow on their on their picks. Yeah, you got to, I mean, you know, obviously Houston's known for their defense, but at the same time they can definitely run up and down the field. Texas Tech pretty much is a run and shoot. They've been run and shoot under Cliff Kingsbury for, what, how many years, five years now at this point. They're, they're, they have no problems running up and down the field. It, yeah, 67, that's, a, that's an interesting total to look at right there. Yeah, the over probably is a good play in that spot. Uh, Bama, I'm scared of, I, I don't know what to do with Bama every year. I feel like I... I feel like my main thing is to fade Nick Saban, which, you know, I'm, I'm stupid for doing that. But this year they look like they're firing on all cylinders. Tago Blaga Blaga, you know, whatever the hell his name is, is now cemented as the starting quarterback. And uh, do you think that now he can play better football that the pressure is off, or do you think he's going to kind of get a little more comfortable now that the pressure is off? Can he play better football? Well, that's the question. I mean, of course he can play better football. I mean, yeah. he's 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 had he's played good football. He's played yes. 
pretty good football, but we've we've looked at uh, Arkansas State and a Louisville team that's not the Louisville of Lamar Jackson era. Yeah, I haven't even watched Alabama play this year. The only thing I've seen of of, uh, of their quarterback is last year's championship game, and uh, just I've seen highlights since then, but not not a whole game. Yeah, the, the, this is another one I probably want to touch. Twenty uh, one's a pretty high number. I think that's pretty much right on the money. I took twenty one. Uh, it seems like there. I, I chose the public side because the scores go in the other way. The point spreads go in the other way. Um, these schools have had some pretty big battles. I think Alabama has a chip on their shoulder going in. They want to go there and they want to kick the crap out of Old Miss. And I think they're going to do that because even before, with an offense that was only a fraction of what they had now, they had close games. And yeah, eight and I two in the last ten years, though, <laughs> straight up. Yeah, well, yeah. Alabama has dominated the rivalry, but you're right. A couple years ago, the last four years, it's two and two. The past it's two and two. Yeah, yeah. you're right. So I think Mississippi comes out, and it's kind of like Vanderbilt last year when they were talking a bunch of smack to Alabama, and Alabama went in and won like 40, 58 to nothing. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I look at this spot as a potential letdown spot with Saban, and again, I just preface this entire game by saying I look for any spot to fade Saban. So I'm going to fucking do it again. And I think Tagovailoa cemented as the starter is is kind of going to lead to a little bit of complacency in this game. I think... Uh, I think that this game's close. I don't. I think the team's a lot better. Ta, Ta'a Amu, I don't know how to say his name, is T-A apostrophe A-M-U, so I'm going to go Ta'a Amu. Is that good enough? Seems legit. I think, I think his name is called the quarterback. Yeah, the quarterback for Ole Miss. Ta'a Amu. What is it? What is that? Uh, Jeff Fafa Dunham. I remember. Fuck it. Anyways, um, I think he's better than he was last year. Obviously, the offensive line's improved. His weapons are good. Everyone's healthy. Last year, that, that, that uh, Ole Miss program was a dumpster fire. And uh, I'm not calling a win, but I think uh, I think a 14-point Bama victory at this point. And uh, I think I think the problem with these spreads with Bama is, like you just said, I haven't watched a lot of Alabama football, and a lot of people I think would say that because they just assume Alabama's going to run right through everybody. And yeah, I'd say 80% of the time they're probably right, but there are spots where you can find a fade for Nick Saban. I'm not betting this game, but if I had to, uh, as Spikes. Analogy likes to use gun to my head. I'll actually make a bet and take Ole Miss plus the 21 points at that point. So uh, LSU and Auburn. Anybody got a play on that one? I took the uh, Road Dogs on that one at 10 points. Yeah, I think that's not a bad matchup. This, this is a weird uh, first time in 20 years uh, that both teams have played a top 15 matchup uh, twice in the first three weeks. So, you know, these are two teams we're going to talk about at the end of the season. Both of them have to play Alabama, so that's going to be the game that matters really for them. But whoever can get out of this one's got to have a strong track in the SEC West. Yes, um, I agree with Matt on that statement. I I would take the Road Dogs in that one and see what happens in the morning. I might fire even a little more on it. Yeah, I think LSU is just a really great matchup for Auburn. Um, I usually stay away from LSU. I never bet them, but I think this is just a good matchup. I think they're just a big bunch of big guys and – that's it's just going to be a slow game, and uh, you know if there's going to be 24 points, I think a 10 point spread sounds pretty good. Yeah, I, I don't. I think we're all in, the, on, in agreement with that one. Uh, with LSU, I mean they've looked good. Obviously beating Miami, Auburn. I think their win against Washington, the top 25 or the top 15 matchup that you know we just discussed. Uh, I think with Washington's injuries, I think created a little bit of a misnomer that Auburn may be better than they actually are. Uh, so, yeah, I think we're all in agreement here with LSU. Yeah, I think Auburn, too, is a school that's just really matchup dependent, too. And I think they, they have the size and ability to crush a lot of people. I just don't think they're going to do that to LSU. or I, They're probably going to win the game. I just don't see them covering. Yeah, I can see I can see either team winning at this point. I wonder, I wonder uh, what a sprinkle on the money line would look like for LSU in that spot. I think it was like plus three, maybe. It's not that a couple days ago. It might, be, might right. be an interesting thing to look at, especially if you're up. Take a little chance on it in the weekend. USC, Texas. This would be the third installment of what has already been a great uh, pairing of games. I don't know if you guys remember, obviously, you know, 2005, I think, was the national championship. Probably one of the greatest national championships that's ever been played, USC versus Texas, the Vince Young game. Yep. And then last year, another, you know, the programs weren't as, obviously, uh, uh, upper echelon caliber as they were in 2005, but still were able to put together a great game where Texas was a big dog, ended up sending the game to overtime before Ellinger threw that uh, that pick that, that sealed the game for USC. Now they're heading to Austin. Texas is a three-and-a-half-point favorite, which I know for a lot of people, especially on social media, 
initial thoughts with that one, especially since USC is ranked kind of a head scratcher. A lot of people kind of came out and said, you know, WTF with the three and a half points for Texas, but uh, I think Texas got an inside track here. Yeah, that's actually one that I'm going to stri- take the strap off on this weekend, and but I like Texas minus the points for sure. Actually, I haven't followed these teams at all, so I really don't know anything about it. But I know Texas defense plays pretty good at homes. Last year, um, they probably had a worse team, and they did pretty good against the spread in the later half of the season. Yeah. So, I mean, they, they play close. Going to Maryland and playing, they got schooled, so they might come back with a chip on their shoulder. And yeah, they've play, got – Play twice as hard. They've got a, definitely a reputation right now of being down in the dumps. I think the team's better than the perception right now as far as Texas goes, and I think – I think they have the ability because this is a this is a very deciding game for Tom Herman because he's in his second season now and things haven't gone great. Like you said, they've lost to Maryland twice, especially this year when Maryland has so many different factors that should have taken their mind away from the game and they still yeah. got beat by the uh, Terrapins. So I think I like the three and a half. I think that I think Texas might win. The, USC's not ready. Their quarterback's too young, and I think that while they're going to be a good team here for the next two three years. They're not going to be a great team, and I think Texas has a spot here to get the home crowd involved and win this game by, I'm going to say, six, seven points. I would lean towards even more two scores. I would say about ten. Wow. You think Texas is going to have a little? i got to consider that in this rivalry and in the state of these programs. i got to consider 14 points kind of a blowout in this game. Yeah. um, I think just Texas defense is going to eat up UCS or USC. They don't play UCF this week. (laughs) USC. USC, there you go. Yeah. Um, you know, USC naturally on the road is not, you know, always the strongest opponent, but uh, a lot of money's pouring in on USC right now. So, especially because, like you said, the, the public perception of Texas is you know, how the hell are they laying three and a half points in the spot? But I think the home field advantage is, uh, is going to be key for them. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I definitely think that the uh, under is also a good play on this. Yeah. I don't see a lot of scoring. Like I said, under went four out of five games at home for Texas. What's the current total that you have on it? USC. 47? Something like that. USC under on the road, eight out of the last 11. So. Wow. Yeah, I got 47 on mine. Yeah, this is 49 to 47 on, yeah. on various ones. Yeah, I like the under in that spot too. Yeah, like you said, yeah, I could see a situation where it's, you know, 21 – 21-16 or something like that. You know, they're definitely a low-scoring game. Both offenses aren't very good. Yeah. Texas defense is definitely better. So it'd be an interesting one to see. I think that's I think that's a must-see TV this week. But I think the must-see TV this week's got to be Ohio State and TCU. In, oh, absolutely. In Jerry World, uh, currently we got uh, 12 and a half points spread, 13 depending on where you can find it. But uh, my initial thoughts are you know, this is the final game of the Urban Meyer suspension, and uh, this was the game that everybody who, we, you know, if you were against the suspension or you didn't think he should have been suspended however many games, this is the game everybody thought, you know, Spike and I talked about it, you know, this is the game you got to be most worried about. Yes, especially for Ohio State. Especially Ohio State trying to make the statement of being – not the best team in the Big Ten last year, but still pretty damn good and just missing out on the playoffs. Well, they were the best team in the Big Ten last yeah. year. They did win the title. But, yeah, you're right. They did not get into the playoff. They're a clear-cut playoff team despite, you know, as long as they run the table, they're going to be a playoff team, even if they do have a loss. Does this loss for Ohio State still keep them in playoff contention because it's early and because it's out of conference? I would say Yes. As long as they don't get uh, blown out. I can't see a blowout here. I think it's yes just because it's Ohio State, and they're going to get it on their reputation and their alumni support. And plus their head coach was not coaching this game too, so that's got to be implied. Yeah, but I mean, okay, if you're the CFP or the college football committee or whatever, I understand, you know, know, Urban Meyer's not in this game, but I, I, I can't imagine you take that into account. I don't think that's a fair, you know, hey, look, you're the one who fucked up and got suspended. That's whether true, whether you agree, we're not going to get into the actual logistics of the the case, but you got suspended. That's, you know, your team needs to, I don't know, I mean, your, your team is going to be punished for that if you lose this game. I think that that should have weight in that spot. It should, but it, it should. probably won't. Yeah, well, we've seen with the CFP, they do pretty much whatever they want at this point. So They put a bind flow, flow down and throw darts. And... We'll see. I mean, if Ohio State runs the board and wins the conference, They've got a legitimate shot. Yeah. I mean, that's 
Let's even, get, even with one loss. Let's get back to this game. We got, like I said, 12 and a half, 13, depending on what spot you find it. Um, TCU plays pretty good defense uh, based on the numbers I'm looking at. And their offense, you know, it's coming around. The total on this game, 59 and a half. I, uh, I got a lot of people I know that like the over in that game. I think if you like TCU, you got to feel like you like the over because Ohio State's going to score. And the only way TCU covers is keeping up. Yes. Um, I would lean towards the under in that. I'm not sure if Ohio State covers the 12.5 per se, but they keep it pretty close to the spread, I guess. See, if Ohio State covers and it goes under, you got to feel like it's a blowout, and TCU never really had a chance. Yeah. Could we see anything the other way there? TC- I, think, TCU. I, think, I think TCU has a, has a great shot. Ohio State on the road. They're not the same team as at home, just like every college game. Urban Meyer's not there. That's probably going to have a factor on these kids. And TCU also runs a similar offense, <clears throat> just like App State does. A lot of screen passes. They use a lot of the field laterally before they move down. They gave, uh, gave Penn State, or Ohio, excuse me, Ohio State a lot of problems. Actually, we just got that. Talk about the wrong school. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about Penn State. <laughs> I'm going to leave that in. <laughs> Penn State. Uh, Never mind. Uh, I'll give you a chance to redeem yourself here. <laughs> you want to try again? <laughs> nah, not really. <laughs> All right. Well, prediction for the final score for me is 30 to 21. Ohio State wins. Okay. Well, um, the last thing I was going to say about it is realistically, uh, could we see any spot where Ohio State's just not ready for this game and gets blown out all by themselves? I don't see it, but I, I can feel like I feel like there's a possibility the where potential. You know, Urban Meyer. And, you know, theoretically, allegedly, is not supposed to have contact with this team. So you have Ryan O'Day. You have a quarterback in Dwayne Haskins who really hasn't been tested yet. They played Oregon State and they played Rutgers. So with the exception of coming in and leading the charge against Michigan last year when JT Barrett got down, he doesn't have a quality game on his resume. This could be a situation where TCU's defense stifles him so much I mean, everybody's last vision of TCU was struggling against SMU. Even though they still covered at the half, they were losing. I think this is a spot where there's a potential that that TCU could win this game pretty handedly because Ohio State's just not prepared and they're too young. And I and I and I initially thought Ohio State, there's no way they're losing this game. But the more I the more I investigate, I, I think TCU's got a shot at that money line. What's the current money line on that? Right around probably three fifty-four. It's got to be more with a twelve and a half point spread. Probably about five. Probably about five or so. Four fifty or five. Yeah, I would say somewhere <clears throat> up in there. I think so. If you can, I think if you can stay close to Ohio State, and I think they're not used to that. They're used to just coming in and kicking the shit out of teams and getting ahead and just bowing over them. And then so, coasting, yeah. Yeah. So if you can keep it close at the end, I think they've got a good shot at that money line. I think I'll play the under, but I'm not sure if I'm going to touch the spread. I don't, and then I take it back. I don't think TCU has any chance of beating Penn State this week. <laughs> I'm gonna say that's that's your stone cold lock. Yeah, of the that's week. my lock of the week right there. Lock of the week. TCU will not beat Penn State. So uh, I think that's 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 good research there, sir. Thank you. Uh, let's talk about some games that we have. I've got games on my card. I'm, I'm playing a lot of the lower tier games this week. Uh, definitely taking off the uh, strap, breaking out. Um, you and I both have uh, the Army Hawaii game. Yes, that is correct. But I think we're on opposite sides at this point. I think we might be, yes. I think Army laying six at this point. Hawaii has to travel all the way across the country. They're going to be, and this is my reasoning, they're going to be starting a game at 12 o'clock Eastern time. Which in Hawaii time is, is like six five. in the morning. Oh, yeah, I was about to say five They're going to be morning. playing football at six in the morning on their internal body clock. Yeah. And yeah, that's a big change. Like I grew up on the East Coast, and when I go back there to, to visit family and just visit. It's even three hours. Is it's a big change. it's hard. Like yeah. you, when you come east to west, you know you can just kind of sleep in one night or yeah, stay east up to late. East to west is way different. Yeah. yeah. When you go when you go that far to the east, it really messes with your body clock. I I don't think they stand a chance in this game. I think they get blown out by Army, who is not you know great you know, but they they have the ability to run to run the football, and I think they're just going to run it down Hawaii's throats. I'll take I'll lay. I think the that's the only up. ability they have actually. It is yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm on the opposite side. I like Hawaii in the spot. Plus the six and a half, I might even sprinkle some on the money line on this. Fair enough. Who, you got anybody uh, that we haven't talked about that you like, Matt? No, those are my three picks. We already went over for college. Okay. I like one more that I'm also taking the strap out of. That is uh, strap on off. 
the strap off of. I've been waiting for that slip up. I, I know he's done it before. <laughs> um, this one's a MAC conference game: Eastern Michigan against Buffalo. In Buffalo, you're looking on the Eastern Michigan beating Purdue. Eastern Michigan beating Buffalo outright. In this no, game. I meant like because yeah. they beat Purdue last week. No, I think Eastern Michigan's pretty solid team, especially when it comes in your conference. Buffalo's a tough team, though. Buffalo's a tough team. They're pretty physical. I think they're just a little slower than the Eastern Michigan. So you're taking Eastern Michigan outright in that spot? Eastern Michigan money line, yes. Fair enough. Another game I, I, uh, I'm i going to be betting, and I got a lot of questions surrounding this game, but I still think that it's where I'm going to go. Toledo getting 10.5 against Miami at home. My first question is, why the hell, if you're Miami, are you scheduling this game? I have no idea. I think they played last year, so a lot of times schools have like multi-year deals. But well, no, I understand. I don't know that. why they did last year. So if that's w- what the one question home, is, one away I or understand. If yeah. you, I understand if you schedule Toledo in a spot, but for a you know for a for an opponent like Miami, this offers no beneficial value. And I understand like you know you schedule these games so far in advance, but you know Toledo coming to Miami makes sense. But Miami coming to Toledo just really is just all theoretically no value for Miami in this spot. No, you are correct because yeah. if. If they don't blow this team out, it's a loss. And if they don't yeah. win, it's a there's, loss. <laughs> there's, there's not many moral victories, but there's moral losses correct. in this I game. I think Toledo's – I'm taking the 10.5. I think Toledo's got a good shot just you walk, like in the Rockets. There, walk in there and beat them. I think they do. they got a good shot. I yeah, mean, you yeah. and I talked about this this week. You know, you're, you, you you thought, you know, hey, what's going on with this line? It looks wonky. It is, but those teams, they're fast. They, they get the players. And Miami, I think they just outclass them athletically. So they have that going for them. But as far mm-hmm. as, like – Actual playing football, I think Toledo's probably the better team. I don't think you're wrong about that. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely take the ten and a half, depending on how I feel. Might sprinkle a little on the money. I might throw a little bit on the money line there. Another spot I like is Wisconsin minus twenty two uh, versus BYU. Uh, Wisconsin, I faded them in the beginning of the season against Western Kentucky, and uh, was a winner in that one. Here, I think is the spot right as the tune up for Big Ten play that they really get going. BYU, after beating Arizona in week one, we've now seen that Arizona's not the team that everybody thought they would be at the start of the season. They're they're just very overrated after getting beat by BYU and getting housed by Houston. Uh, 22 points is not a lot as far as, as far as I'm concerned at home to give up 22 points when you're Wisconsin, and, and they have you know the ability on both sides, as both facets of the ball, offense and defense, especially uh, their offense running and passing, has the ability to put up, I think they can put up 55, 60 points in this game, and uh, I don't think BYU has a chance to keep it anywhere close in that spot. So I'm going to lay the 22 and take Wisconsin as a tune-up for Big Ten play. They're going to run They're gonna run the table on that one. So um, uh, any other things you got going on, Nerd Token? Uh, not, not as of college right now, but that could easily change come Saturday. I will add that my Wisconsin tip is wait until they don't score and put a in-play bet in about ten minutes in, and they'll shave about five points off that line. Hmm. Interesting. That is a good. Yeah. You know, in-play is a good spot. You know, especially if they get out to a little slow start. Yeah, I got them last week at like twenty-two, and they covered that, and then they didn't cover the thirty-five or whatever it was. Yeah. As the traditional like that, yeah. line. Yeah. Because they just they come out. You know, they're not out to beat you at the gate. They beat you at the finish line. That is true. Uh, my last play is uh, Vanderbilt fourteen and a half at Notre Dame. Um, I think Vanderbilt's a very good SEC team, and to walk into Notre Dame, I'm basing this based on a lot of what Notre Dame did against Michigan was because Michigan wasn't very good, isn't very good, and Ball State showed that the very next week, the ability to come in and keep up with Notre Dame. I think Vanderbilt's a better team than Ball State. I think Vanderbilt could win this game. I'm going to lay the odds that they don't win this game, but I will take the two touchdowns in that spot. So my picks are Army minus six, Toledo ten and a half, uh, Vanderbilt plus 14.5, and, and Wisconsin laying the 22. So uh, hopefully we'll have a good weekend with that. All right, Spike, since I know you've been chomping at the bit, let's move over into the guys who get paid. Oh, boy. Are you excited? Sure. Do you have your picks ready? No. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't actually looked at any of these games this week. I'm just going to kind of make it up as I go along. Just going to toss uh, starts as he goes. Uh, starts, all starts with research. All right, well, let's... let's uh, well, let's 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 just initially week two thoughts. I mean, you got a couple injuries. Leonard Fournette may or may not play. You have Aaron Rodgers, who we all assume he's going to play, but uh, you never quite know. Mark, Mike McCarthy hasn't given a definitive odds. 
Um, Fitzmagic coming into week two against the Eagles. I think that's one of the good games to watch. I know we talked about that last week on the recap. Uh, let's talk about the game tonight, you know, or actually when this airs, it'll be uh, well, Thursday night. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I know that a lot of people I talked to were on Baltimore based on the 47-3 to butt whoop with a Buffalo, but uh, uh, your boy A.J. Green had a, had a hell of a night. Yeah, well, I seem to remember you in all of your wisdom telling me that Baltimore was a very good team and that uh, mm-hmm. they are... You know, I, but, it's spectacular, and I even whoa, heard, spectacular was not a, <laughs> well, no. But I, I, I actually heard somebody on uh, Boston sports radio, which, uh, as we all know, is the most rational and even-headed sports radio market in the country. Uh, we're actually saying that in the AFC, in order, the teams are uh, Patriots, Jaguars, Ravens. I would not agree with that, and we did not see that at all tonight. They didn't look good in any aspect of the game. They finally started getting points back on the board after they were down 28 mm nothing. Mm-hmm. So this is... Uh, Baltimore is not a good team. They're just not a good team, especially losing to a team like Cincinnati, which is still an enigma that n- I still haven't been able to figure out in about five years. Yeah, I think Baltimore's got a bad mix. I think they have really good receivers that all run crossing routes, and Flacco's strength has always been like the deep ball. Yeah, he's the really defensive not... pass interference, forty yards downfield. <laughs> yeah, getting pass interference calls yeah. is his strong point. But right. I, I just don't think that team plays Despite his the strong best points. Best wide receivers, the refs. Yes. Let me preface this. Last week, before you putting words in my mouth, Baltimore is a quality playoff contender. It is a long season, but we did not speak about Cincinnati. I think if Cincinnati goes with Andy Dalton and AJ Green. They are also a playoff contender. No, they're both terrible. See, they're both I think bad you, I teams. think you overreact, though. No, I'm not overreacting. You, I, think you're, I think your mental philosophy is if they don't have Tom Brady, they're all hot garbage. No, you spent last so, 16's week... Sixteen's got to make the playoffs. When Baltimore was kicking the shit out of basically like a high school team in the Buffalo Bills... Yes. That Baltimore is a Buffalo, or that Baltimore is a, a playoff contender, and they're this. And they're I said that before they even played the Buffalo Bills. But yeah. they're terrible. How could you say? And that's not what I contender. said. Well, well, the, the, the best player on the Ravens team, I believe, is right. the kicker. Let me break this down, and I'll ask somebody who wasn't on the podcast this week, and and, and listen very carefully because the, the 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 analysis can be confusing. See him. We talked about last week. There's Pittsburgh played Cleveland. You're obviously aware of that. Yes. And Baltimore played Buffalo. Mm-hmm. And before or while these games were going on, Spike and I discussed, I said the talent level or the talent gap between Baltimore and Buffalo was wider than the talent gap between Cleveland and Pittsburgh. I don't think so. <laughs> okay. I think, Pittsburgh, I think Pittsburgh is loaded with talent. They should be a lot better than they are. Uh, they have great receivers, a great offense. Let's see, 26 went on the field. What's that? I said Le'Veon Bell wasn't on the field when we talked about this. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess, I mean, you do have a little asterisk there. And this was before the final scores were approached. This was before 47-3 and, what was it, 22, 24-24, whatever the tie was. 21-21. 21-21. So, I mean, I, I think Buffalo, okay, we want to talk about garbage. Buffalo is a hot dumpster fire. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And the Peterman experiment is officially over. They are starting... The man who lost to UNLV in his college career. God, you just love to hold on to that I one stat, don't you? I will not give it up. <laughs> Especially because I actually know somebody. I've got a really good friend that works at the University of Wyoming, where Alan is from. So I just I enjoy posting UNLV memes to her Facebook page all the time. <laughs> he knows one more person in Wyoming than I do, so I can tell you that. That's true. I've driven through Wyoming a few times, but that's about it. I about know about Wyoming. All right. Well, since since Matt doesn't agree with me, I'm gonna turn his mic down real quick. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? I said <laughs> what? 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 All right. Well, let's dive into some games here. Let's start with uh, Indianapolis and Washington. The consensus is five and a half. Washington is the favorite. Uh, both teams, I thought, looked pretty good last week. Uh, obviously, one won, one lost. But uh, an Indianapolis who lost to this same Cincinnati team that you think is hot garbage. So uh, five and a half, Spike. <clears throat> classy. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm, I'm really classy. I don't know. I like what Washington's doing with the Alex Smith experiment, and I think... Uh, Everybody's experimenting now. Yeah. The whole NFL's experimenting in, in Spike's mind. And, and I think that with uh, having to play for uh, fake Gruden's job that Washington's going to come out 
uh, especially at home. I, 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 I like the skins in this spot. I, I'm still not convinced that Andrew Luck is 100% healthy. I still don't know that he has the weapons and the defense to help him win games. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm taking the skins minus the five in this one. Yeah, I believe this will be a high-scoring game in my mind. I actually like to play on the over on this current total I see is 48. I believe both defenses aren't capable of keeping up with both offenses, and both teams put up big numbers. I actually lean the opposite way of you, though. I like the Colts plus the 5.5. You know, Redskins last year had a lot of injuries, especially on defense. Um, that really, I mean, it took their season out. Jordan Reed was injured. They have a, a lot of players back that they didn't have last year. They're a good team, and that defense is going to shut down Colts and it's going to shut down Luck. Skins are going to cover, and that's one of my top two plays of the week. I'm on Indianapolis at this point. I still think I, I have this man crush for Luck, and I think that he's going to come back. He should have won the last game uh, with not for Jack Doyle's fumble, so he should have beat... Spike's favorite team, the Bengals. Is that because so. he's such a smooth talker? Is that why you have a crush on him? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. I'm really nervous to go play football again. Uh, yes, yes. I, I, I think Andrew Luck is a better quarterback than he's given credit for. So. I think him and Smith are pretty much a wash, and I think if the defense gets to him a couple times. So what's the X factor we'll here? Well, Adrian Peterson? Peterson running up the middle for 200 yards. I'll take the under on that one. Uh, the, Colts, the Colts gave up. I don't know the exact number, but it was they like 120 yards or something. Yeah, it was like a six yard average to uh, to Cincinnati. Who Mixon's good? That guy can get some yards. Yeah. but I mean, I Peter... hope I hope AP can get some yards because I got him on fantasy. So, <laughs> well, I hope you both win. Number one rule: no one cares about your fantasy team, including you. All right, let's move on. An interesting game in the NFC South that's going to I think uh, have a lot of eyes on it is uh, Carolina going into Atlanta. Atlanta opening up five and a half point uh, favorite in this spot. Especially since what we saw. I mean, Carolina was very dominating against Dallas, and Atlanta lost to Philly, who, yes, they're the Super Bowl champions, but they didn't look very good on that Thursday night. <laughs> Except Atlanta looked worse. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it, it, Atlanta's offense, which has been their strength the last few years, looked anemic at best. Uh, and I think, as good as Philadelphia's defense is, yeah, I think that was mostly Atlanta not being able to put things together. Now, obviously, they're that offense should be fine by the end of the season. I just don't know why they're not in rhythm yet. Uh, I do like Carolina, although I think going into Atlanta, this is a, a real tough spot for them. I think uh, Newton's going to have to play better than he did against Dallas. Uh, I am sticking with a, uh, a home favorite in this one. I do like Atlanta minus the five. I'm not or five, five and a half, depending on where you go. I, I, I'm not putting money on this one personally. I, just, I don't feel that confident about it, but I, I, I think i got to stick with Atlanta. I actually like Carolina in the spot. I think Carolina has a faster pace of play, more clock management, game management, especially with Newton being in control of the ball. I believe they easily cover, if not win this game out, right? Yeah, I think the spread's pretty accurate. Atlanta at home and Atlanta on the road are two different teams. Uh, Carolina lost Greg Olson, who is that matters. their number one weapon. Without him, it's pretty much McCaffrey. I'm not impressed with their receiving core at all. Um, I don't think they're going to be able to hang. Atlanta's just going to run away. And it'll, it'll be close, but I see Atlanta run away and covering easy. Also, the under has hit in this matchup uh, the last eight out of ten times. Yeah, that's the, the the total on this one was one I kind of looked at a forty four and a half consensus across the board on VI. Uh, yeah, the unders are definitely a strong trend. I just I like the over. I think both these teams can score, even though they didn't show it last week. I think they're going to ramp up the offense. Atlanta lost two very key pieces on defense in Keon O'Neal and Deion Jones, and I think that's going to matter. Um, spread wise, I'm I think we're in a consensus here, except for Token. I think we're all in Atlanta. I think Atlanta wins this game in the 27-20 region, so I'm going to take Atlanta, and then for my total, I'll take the over in that spot. So, I um, I think that's I think that's going to be I think Atlanta with a victory, they got to do it because starting out 0-2 is going to be detrimental to them, especially uh, in that division. Minnesota and Green Bay currently off the board in most spots. However, uh, it did open up 
as a pick 'em before it went off the board when we got all the information about Aaron Rodgers. Monday morning, uh, or excuse me, Sunday night, you heard Aaron Rodgers after the game say, I'm playing Sunday. Monday morning, you heard Mike McCarthy say, that might not be the case. Yeah, and it's, I don't know if this is just gamesmanship on the part of the Green Bay coaching staff. I mean, come on, Mike Zimmer is not preparing for Deshaun Kaiser. He doesn't really have to. No, but I mean, he's, well, that's very true, but he's a very different style of quarterback from Aaron Rodgers. Agreed. So having to, you know, keep Minnesota sort of on their toes and having to do double the preparation, I think, is just playing into McCarthy's hands. I think we all know Rodgers is going to play in this game. Uh, I don't think anybody's too concerned unless he gets hit again, and I think the problem is Minnesota can hit him. Uh, Minnesota's front line on that defense. They knocked them out last year. Yeah. They look scary, and they look better this year than they did last year, I think. I think that they're gelling better. Uh, we saw what they were able to do against Garoppolo. Now, of course, Garoppolo has probably the worst offensive line in the league, uh, so he didn't get much help. But I think keeping Rodgers upright is going to be the key to the game, and I don't think Green Bay can do it. I worry about the Packers in this spot. If this game comes back on the board, I'm taking Minnesota. Yes, I really like Minnesota in the spot, I think. With or without Rodgers, Green Bay still loses this game. I don't really know. I, this game is just, it's a rivalry game. It's going to be close. I just, as far as like betting sports, I just stayed away from this game. It's going to be entertaining to watch if Rodgers plays, but I mean, it's just really a who-knows game. Yeah, you're right. I mean, a lot of times in games like this, like you said, division games, rivalry games, it's really about the ball bouncing the right way for one team or the other. And I think that's evidenced by a pick em in that spot. Yeah. You know, there's no real decided advantage. I think there's way better. I think there's games with better edges in this one for sure. Yeah, but you got to make a pick. I'll take Minnesota. I think we're all in Minnesota in this spot. So. Uh, well, you said the Nathan Peterman experiment is over. <laughs> and here we are with the Josh Allen uh, experience, I guess we're going to go with. Yeah, Josh sure. Allen experience. Uh, Chargers going into Buffalo, seven and a half points. Uh, you know, we talked about this with the college thing, you know, going west to east. L.A. has always had a problem doing this as well. It's so weird to call them L.A. It's still not, still not registering with me, really. Yeah, and especially the fact that their abbreviation is L.A.C. I keep wanting to call them the Clippers. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's, that's not great. Uh, seven and a half points. It's the Clippers and the Laffer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with Spike on this one. Give me LAC on this. I'm taking Buffalo. What? You guys are making too much out of one game. Last I'm taking year, Buffalo as well. Last yeah. year, Buffalo's road record was horrible, and their home record was fantastic. They, they, they were 7-1 and one at home last year. Yeah, their defense steps up. Allen, eh, I don't know, but seven points is a lot. Seven and a half, excuse me, is a lot for Buffalo at home. It matters. And uh, I'll take the points against... Against the traveling team. I will take the points as well in that spot. There's really not a lot to analyze about this game. Uh, so we're just not going to. So split down the middle, two and two, seven and a half points. I like Buffalo as well. Uh, your boy, Deshaun Watson, Spike, he's get, uh, given two points to Tennessee on the road. Uh, or is he not your boy anymore? Well, I dropped him in fantasy, if that's what you're talking about. <laughs> wow, that no, was quick. I, uh, yeah, wow. it, it kind of was, and this could be overreaction, although, to be fair, I did... Uh, drop him in order to pick up Philip Rivers. I'm going with a strategy of playing any quarterback that's playing against Buffalo that week. So uh, I, I had to take a shot at Rivers there. But no, I, I think Watson, uh, you know, for the flashes of brilliance he showed last year and for the the competency that he showed in bits and pieces in the game against the Patriots, I'm still not 100% Sold on him now as I was during the preseason. Uh, I want to see him get seasoned a little bit more in the league. Um, that said, I still like Houston minus the two, two and a half, depending on where you go in this spot, just because I am, for as unsold as I am on Watson, I am less sold on Tennessee as an entire team. I think that statement was brave as Spike saying that he's going to take any quarterback against Buffalo, including Stafford, when they play <laughs> Buffalo. As long as interceptions don't count. <laughs> um, 
I believe in Houston this week. I I think I believe. I think they get the job done when a relatively close game. I would say lower scoring. I like the under in the spot. Yeah, I definitely take the under. These are two defensive teams. Mariota was injured last <clears throat> last week. Tennessee looked like crap. Uh, I was really surprised by the Texans play last week. Uh, pretty weak, although that's a tough first game. So we'll we'll see what happens, but um, I'll take Houston and I'll take the under. I think this game matters be, uh, in terms of of where I lean as far as Mar- Marcus Mariota's availability. If he plays, I think Tennessee wins this game. If obviously they have to put Blaine Gabbard in, they stand no chance. So yes. uh, I will play this Tennessee with a caveat based on Marcus Mariota starting and playing the entire game. Uh, if he doesn't have a chance, then Houston should wipe the floor with this team. Yeah, I think both the last games are, that we talked about are like the yeah. very very injury dependent. Yeah, for sure. Uh, game of the week I'm I'm interested in watching, especially um, especially since I whenever I watch a game I have to have action on. So I'll be I'll be betting this one is Kansas City versus Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's opening up four and a half points, or they open up at five. It's down to four and a half at this point. You got five and a half somewhere? Uh, on my ticket, I do. Oh wow, you caught you caught uh, the, the Chiefs at five and a half. Yeah, I was put it in like the next day. I really like that line. Oh wow, so yeah, it's going down definitely. A lot of people betting Kansas City at this point. Spike, I know that the talent gap is so wide with <laughs> Pittsburgh. Well, Pittsburgh to Cleveland, yes. <laughs> Pittsburgh to Kansas City, not so much. All right, well, since you you've fucking muppet. since you've been dribbling man juice all over your face as far as the black and gold man juice. Yeah, that that, uh, that that's got to be it. Clearly, the <laughs> fact that I think Pittsburgh is a better team than Cleveland means that I've been sucking Roethlisberger. Dick. Well, if you if you base all of your evidence on Week One, Pittsburgh is an equal team. To yeah, ju- just l- let's wait until we get to talk about Blake Bortles, and then we'll see which one of us has come dripping down our shins. You fucking muppet. <laughs> um, in any event, I'm taking Kansas City. I was say, he's going to fade him. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to fade him. <laughs> no, I really like what I saw in Kansas City this past week. I think Pat Mahomes, Pat McGroin, whatever his name is, is uh, uh, starting to step up. There's a ton of weapons on offense on this team. And I, I think uh, with uh, Pittsburgh uh, missing Le'Veon Bell, I don't think Connor can have quite the same performance this week as he did last week. And I, I think... Pittsburgh turning into a one-dimensional team is going to hurt him. I think Kansas City can pull it out. I think the, <laughs> Kansas City pulled out. <laughs> I think the so. one one X factor in this line is Kansas City's offensive line against uh, Pittsburgh's defensive line, and how quick they can get to uh, Pat Mahomes. Uh, I still like Kansas City in the spot. I think Tyreek Hill and Kareem Hunt are the difference makers in this game, and I actually lean towards the money line even in this. Money line's not bad. I'll take the points. And, uh, I mean, it's Andy, Andy Reid in the regular season, so I think it's a guaranteed win. I mean, until he gets to the playoffs, right? Yeah, I mean, he doesn't mismanage the clock until the playoffs. So yeah, I think you're safe. Sounds like the Lions in the playoffs. No, I think, he, it is, I think he, they're going to outcoach Pittsburgh. They're going to outplay him. And uh, that's going to be it. They're gonna, Kansas City, I think they're going to win, but I'll take the five and a half points gladly. Wow. I thought somebody would be on my side in this spot. I, I think Vegas knows this is the perfect opportunity to fade Pittsburgh in this spot, and I, and I, I think based on this, the overwhelming majority of you three doing it, I think it, it plays right in exactly my thought process here. Is I'm going to take Pittsburgh in the points. I think Pittsburgh wins a close game by 6, 26-20 in that spot, which is good enough to cover 4.5 or, or your 5.5 that you have on your ticket. Um, I think Connor's good. I think Connor's – Perfectly capable. He's not Le'Veon Bell. Let's not sugarcoat that. Let's not try to disguise that at all. He's not Le'Veon Bell. But, As of now. <laughs> but the weapons that they have completely are good enough to still be, you know, the class of the AFC, like you say. And Kansas City's defense is going to give him some yards. Yeah, they're not what they were, you know, for the last five years. A lot of those guys are either gone or injured or old. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I agree with you in that spot. So I'm going to take Pittsburgh in that spot uh, to cover the four and a half points. So uh, I'm either going to be way wrong, and you guys can make fun of me next podcast. We'll see, it's going to be interesting. Patrick Mahomes, it's a that's going to be a big start for him on the road in Pittsburgh. We'll see. Yeah. Miami and the Jets, a game I don't think any of us have interest in watching, but we are going to make a pick. And uh, everybody loves Sam Darnold after one game minus the first pass of his career, <laughs> uh, which I I don't I wouldn't say I had egg on my face, but I watched that game and like we you know we were talking back and forth on text. 
you know, I, I tweeted out immediately when he threw that pick six. I was like, uh oh. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know, that was the only real boneheaded play he had. He he looked really good against Detroit, which uh, Token knows it's not hard to do. No. Um, but the line right now is Jets minus three at home against Miami. Who Miami, who played in that marathon game against Tennessee without Mariota for most of the game, did end up with a win. Both teams are one and zero in this spot. You know, whoever wins this game, battle of undefeated. Yeah, I mean, I understand the Patriots, you know, are there, and they have a tough game. I mean, you know, we'll talk about Patriots-Jags later, but if Jags are able to win that game, the winner of this game will be in first place if the Jags win on Sunday as well. How crazy is that to think about a team other than the Patriots being in first place in the AFC East? It's happened once this this, uh, century. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that 2008 year where uh, Matt Castle had to start for Brady. I think twice, right? And and since 2000, I think they've, they've lost the division twice. I think it was just one, I think it was just that one Matt Castle, but no, I could be wrong. Brady's could be second year, they went nine and seven. Yeah, the Jets won the okay. division. Yeah. Right? Okay. And it was uh, I think was that the year Chad Pennington won comeback player of the year. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Um, but still, two times in eighteen or seventeen years is pretty yeah, it, it, it's pretty ridiculous. Uh, this game, if this game's in Miami, I'm taking the Dolphins. But I think in this spot uh, in New Jersey, I'm going to roll with Darnold and the Jets. And uh, see if he is legitimate or if he's a one-hit wonder against a clearly rebuilding Detroit team. <laughs> rebuilding. Not on defense. They're just going to keep that thing flat, though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this one I'm not sure about. I think this is kind of my blind side pick of the week, and it could easily change, though. I like Miami. I think this is definitely just a home home field advantage. The team's going to win. The Jets have played, even in the past couple of years when they've had horrible teams, they've played Miami really tough because Miami has really horrible teams. But this year, they're different. I like Sam Darnold. Uh, I was actually working. I couldn't bet. But after he threw that pick that pick six, I was going to put a money line in play on him. And uh, you know, it seemed like a good opportunity. I think he's a good kid. I think the Jets are, I don't know if I'm ready to call him a good team, but I'll call him an average team. Fair and enough. I'm not even ready to throw that in Miami yet. E- even that pick six wasn't too horrible. It was a good defensive read and a good leap. Yeah. Yeah, in spots like this, I like to look at three factors to kind of make a pick. And I look at the quarterback, the offensive line, and the defensive line. And I take the team that has two out of three better than the other one. And I think the quarterback and the defensive line are better in Miami than they are in New York at this current point. So I will take Miami plus the three points. Because like you said... That three is essentially just home field advantage. So effectively, on a neutral site, this is a pick em game. I think Miami is uh, more talented at their skill positions. They have a better defensive line, and I think they have a better uh, quarterback at this point. So I'll take the three points in Miami, and I think they'll probably end up winning this game. We'll see. This is an interesting year for Tannehill coming off. You guys always have the same year every year. He's so talented. and oh, I'm not saying he's so and, talented. Well, he's a very talented guy, very physically talented, and uh, he just gets injured every year. So we'll see. Yeah, it, we'll see. It'll be interesting. I don't think any of these teams are a serious threat to be playoff contenders. No. Apparently, I have to be very specific when I talk about playoff contenders with Spike. So, cause what, what, these what, are hot garbage teams. <laughs> there you what, go. Which quarterback in in this game is more likely of a butt fumble? Tannehill or I don't know. We should. <laughs> oh. I'm waiting for Mark Sanchez to tweet yeah. back. Where's Desiree? She's gonna text him again. Which, which team's gonna be better in two years, though? That's a good question. Jets. Uh, Jets. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. I easy. Think, well, yeah, I, I easy, guess it, it depends on if Miami is willing to move on from Tannehill and they draft a, a, a franchise type quarterback, somebody that can get over, over the hump. I think Miami's gonna shot at it. Here's an interesting but bet. For now, it's the Jets. Here's an interesting bet. I just thought about. Okay, Tom Brady retires. Let's just call it 2020. Just for no, no, no real th- thought into that. Can we just say he gets injured next week and has to Shut the stop fuck playing? Up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Tom Brady retires 2020. What do you think the odds would be on the other three teams, the first team to win a division, not name the Patriots, when Tom Brady retires? Who do you think the first team in the division would be? I'll go with the Jets. I like I said, I, th- I, think, I think they're heading in the right direction. Yeah. I think they've been building. Well, that's a tough one. <laughs> it's Because, t- I mean, yes, I understand that how the dominance of the Patriots. I'm talking about specifically when Brady retires. Make a, make a pick right now. Who's the, who's the next team? To, who's the first division team not named the Patriots in the AFC East to win the division when Tom Brady retires? Jets. I would say Jets because their fan base is moderately loyal and they got a good following. So, The fuck does that have to do with winning a division? 
Oh, I, I mean, fan base, fan crowd. Well, in that case, the, the Chiefs should win the Super Bowl every fucking year. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't the Lions. <laughs> no, that's, that's true. Half of them die every week. Yeah. Uh, all right, Philly and Tampa. Uh, Fitzmagic going to go for round two. They're a three-point dog at home. I actually, uh, I'm going to ride uh, the Fitzmagic in the Harvard train here. Take that B train of Alston into Cambridge and over under uh, six and a half Harvard mentions in the in the telecast. Oh, over for sure. Over? I would take the over in for that sure. Too. I'm actually going to take Tampa Bay money line in this one too. I'm uh, at home. I I think they're able to put something together. I think they're able to uh, keep the momentum going, and uh, I think they can just flat out outlast uh, Philadelphia. I like Philly in this one. I think. I think the Fitzmagic uh, experiment is grinding down to a halt. <laughs> After one week. Yeah. Yeah, I think Philly's definitely the better team. Tampa at home, three points. It's pretty tough to pass up. They played played good last week. They gave up a lot of yards um, passing. Their running game looked good. This revamped wide receiver core for Tampa is good. Evans... <clears throat> Jackson, uh, the guy they drafted, the running back looked really good last week, and Fitz can hit him. You give him time, he'll put the ball there, and he's better than their other their other guy who's riding the pine. So I, you know, but I don't know. It's going to be a good game to watch. I have the over in this game. I got it at forty four, and I put uh, I put two units on it. Yeah, I. Uh, this is going to be my total play. Um, or no, I already had a total play, so we can skip that. I'll, I'm going to play Tampa on this point as well. I do like the over as well. So if I had a second total play, that would be it. But uh, Tampa Bay plus three, I think, is a good spot here. However, I do think that I am. I think that Tampa is the is the is the square pick at this point. But I'm going to ride with the square. Cleveland, New Orleans, New Orleans is now another almost double digit favorite again. They are nine points against Cleveland at home again. We look at round two. <laughs> another almost double digits, and they lose the game. Uh, no, no. no, no I, I, I'm actually not touching this uh, spread. I'm looking at the total on this. Uh, I think Cleveland, while not consistent, can put up points, and we all know that New Orleans can put up points in bunches. I'm taking uh, the, the line open to 47 and a half. It's at 49 now. I'm taking. I'm still taking the over 49. Yeah, I think that's a good play as well. Uh... I like the Browns plus the points in this. I think they have enough to keep it within a touchdown or so, and still Brown on this game, but... Still what? Be Browns about this game, but... What does that mean? It means that they can find ways to lose. Fair enough. So the fridge isn't opening this week in your mind? Fridge not, not open this. Well, I'll take, I'll take the Saints. I think they're going to come out... They know what happened last week. They don't want to repeat. They know they got to put it on the Browns and just stick it to them. Um, Browns are a really talented team. Uh, you know, I don't want to rehash that argument we just had before, but I think the Saints. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think the Saints are going to cover the spread this time. So um, wait, 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 wait. I, I do want to rehash it because I believe you just said the Browns are a talented team, but you said the talent they, gap was bigger Pittsburgh to Cleveland. Well, they have talent, but getting getting them to work together is where coaches come in, and that's why coaches are so important. I'm going to take a detour here. I think. Pittsburgh's defense is not very good. I don't think that this, and I know that you're you're still going to disagree with me. I don't think that Pittsburgh's as good as everybody's making them to be. I mean, look at Ben Roethlisberger. He had five fucking turnovers last week. I think he had six actually. Was it one it was of them five. cherry? Was it five? five. Okay, so five. Was one of those cherry? I'm just saying, like when we talk about the class, I think the AFC is the the down conference between the two. And yeah, the class of the AFC is New England, and I think there's everybody else. And you can stack them two to eight, however you want. But Jaguars, Pittsburgh, Kansas City, Houston, Tennessee, you know, uh, Baltimore, Cincinnati—all those teams, I think, are just kind of a jumbled mess right now. And then obviously, it's too early to tell. But uh, I just have to keep throwing this in Spike's face. Go ahead. I knew he was going to see Cincinnati for some reason. <laughs> but actually, I, I'm actually leaning towards the under on this play. I, I can't it's just say a 49 Baltimore. or 50. I can't say Baltimore's good and then Cincinnati beats them and then they're not good. So yeah, uh, let's see where are we at here. You said the 49ers. Where 49. Where? I go under. Saints don't have like the team they had 
five years ago. Oh, four 49. Years ago. Okay. I thought we were talking about the 49ers. I'm like, when did no, we no, move no, no, on? No. <laughs> I'm like, when did we move on? 49 was the total. <laughs> 49 total. You know, the Saints don't have the offense they had a couple years ago, or they do. They just run it different. They have a different style of play now. And the Browns, they just, you know, they, they're not going to put up too many points. So remind me of 14, maybe. 17, maybe. You think? Yes. Uh, all right, Spike. So remind me of this blind bet thing. We get one blind bet? Yeah, we get one that we're not confident in, right? That we're not confident in where it's we're putting a gun to your head and saying you have to pick a game on this or you have to pick a side on this whether it's I mean, you could even pick like New Orleans money line and just say that you're still not confident in the pick and that would count. And it would with the the scoring system that I proposed to this thing which we haven't actually agreed upon but I whatever. Or released. Um Make it up as we go. Yeah, instead of being uh, two points for a win, minus one for a loss, this is uh, two to win, zero for a loss. So if you get it wrong, it doesn't hurt you. All right, well, I'm ready to make my blind bet here. I uh, I think everybody's just on the Cleveland train right now. They all saw what New Orleans, as the biggest spread last week, did. They laid an egg. I don't think that happens twice in a row in the Superdome. Sean Payton, Drew Brees going to have the boys ready. My blind bet is New Orleans minus the nine. I'm not 100% confident in it, but I think it's a blowout. All right. Biggest spread of the week, L.A., the Rams, 13 points against Arizona. Arizona looked like a team who should be a 13-point dog this week against uh, Washington last week. Uh, They did not have really anything to to say on offense. And we're going to go another week with the Sam Bradford. uh, Let's see. We've used experiment. We've used experience. The Sam Bradford mistake. We'll go with that. Uh, L.A. looked really good in the second half against Oakland, but uh, I think that's some some cause for question. I don't know if maybe that uh, you might agree with me, you might not, but 13 points is a lot. Is Arizona sticking with Bradford this week? I think so, at least to start. As far as we know, yeah. Okay, I've only heard talks and rumors on the shows. I don't, yeah, think, so. I don't think they're quite ready to take the Ferrari out of the garage because I think right now, even if you throw Rosen in, they're still not that good. They're not contending for an NFC West. Especially against the Rams. Yeah, well, and especially with... Yeah, you're not going to throw them against the Rams. Yeah, so. Johnson's still listed as questionable, and Buda Baker is either questionable or doubtful for this game. So you essentially have the, one of their top offensive weapons and one of their top defensive weapons are both questionable against a team that is probably top two or three in the NFC. Mm-hmm. Uh, this might be a game where we just see Arizona punt, and I mean that figuratively, where they just, you know, show up for the sake of showing up so the season ticket holders don't sue them. And, uh, but I was, they, they practice their fundamentals? Yeah, yeah, I mean, this is, you know, if this were a teaser bet, it would be Rams minus 7. I think I'd go with the pleaser bet and take Rams minus 20 and still feel comfortable in this game. Yeah, I, I, I like the Rams in a blowout. I think Arizona gets some points towards the end as, like, mercy score, like a touchdown. But possibly even. <laughs> uh, I like the Rams, thirty-four to seven. You know, I think if the Rams bus crashes on the way to the stadium, I think Arizona has a good chance of winning this game. <laughs> at, at least a tie. At least a tie. Other than that, uh, thirteen points is going to be covered by half. And given so the fa- I, I would probably just bet the first half on this game, to be honest with you. Given the fact that uh, Humboldt just the Humboldt Broncos hockey team just played their first game after their bus crash, that was a very topically wrong reference at that point. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know that one gave that, me yeah. a little goosebumps. Um, I'm sticking to my theory. Biggest spread of the week, I take the dog. So I'm taking Arizona. They're going to lose 31-20. to 20. So uh, that's my spot. I, I, I've, it's, it's, it's worked out in the past. Biggest, biggest spread of the week, I always take the dog. So... Uh, Detroit and San Francisco, I'm going to lead this one off with Token because Detroit's his team, and he needs to explain or give some kind of reasoning why he thinks Detroit's going to win this game when they're the probably the biggest dumpster fire. I don't think Detroit's <laughs> going to win this game. <laughs> I'm a really realistic fucking fan. I think they get not beat down as much as against the Jets, but they still get beat down. I let I really like San Francisco minus the six in this game. <laughs> wow. And it, this is a weird game, too, because it opened at three, and it has moved to six. Mm-hmm. Which that's is, a hell of a movement. Yeah, and that frankly scares the hell out of me. But see, I believe that line opened, correct me if I'm wrong, that line opened up on Monday before Detroit had played a game? I, I think that's correct. So it was 
seeing how bad Matt Patricia's team has responded to the Matt Patricia uh, move. Slash Stafford. Matt Patricia movement. Yeah. Um, I, I think that there are too many questions in Detroit. The flip side of that is I think there's still too many questions in San Francisco for me to feel comfortable with this. Uh, I'm going to take a slightly easier route and just say give me under 48. I'd have to agree with that. This is basically two dumpster fires seeing who can burn less hot. So let's just go, <laughs> let's just go with the under and not even watch the game. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yep. I'll watch the game while having my face in a trash can. <laughs> I like Detroit plus the six. I think I think I think Spike's overreaction on week one is going to be the public's overreaction in week two. Same similar scenario. He jumps the gun on something without really even if you didn't watch the game, you just look at the overreaction of them getting housed in week one. I think they're a better team and uh they're going, you know, east to west, which doesn't usually create problems for an East Coast team, even though they're in Detroit, I know. They are in the eastern time zone. I think the six points I still think they're gonna lose this game, but I think they'll I think the three point spread was more of an accurate assessment. Uh but I like I said that that line came out before Detroit got housed by the Jets. Uh, I think they lose by three, which gives me a good cover with the six. So I'll take Detroit with the six points. I think it's going to be a close game, closer than people think. But you're right. I will not be, even with my DirecTV Sunday ticket, I will not be flipping to that game. And I, I urge... Oh, oh, unless if it's on the red zone. Some well, I was about to say, reason. I urge the red zone to maybe not show that to me. So You're right. I don't want to see it. Well, I mean, you're kind of screwed because it's one of the afternoon games of which there are only four. So, but I got to imagine there, and we'll talk about them. There are more interesting afternoon games that I am interested in watching. Oh, I don't know. One of those being New England and Jacksonville. Uh, Spike, I got to give you credit here. I don't like to give you credit a lot, but I have to give you credit here. The game opened up at Pickham, and you said if you like New England, jump on them because they're going to go up. And they've gone all the way up as high as I've seen to three points. Back down here on Vegas Insider to a one point favorite. So kudos to you by basically saying if you like New England, jump on them because you, you were ahead of the line movement on that one. Yeah, and that was, you know, I, I think that's a lot of people seeing that uh, Brady is back. He still knows what he's doing. He's showing no signs of aging, which is a little insane. Uh, the offensive line, even though it's rebuilt, is looking okay. I'm worried about a couple of the penalties that they are likely to get in this game. But I think Jacksonville's biggest weakness is the fact that uh, what's-his-nuts there just can't shut the fuck up. And he just came out and said that Gronkowski's not very good. So Gronkowski's going to have a game of about 275 yards and six touchdowns. <laughs> so I'm taking, like the over. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm taking New England minus the one, one and a half, depending on where it's at. Um, but, yeah, I... I this game should be a New England victory, no matter how it goes down. Yeah, I agree with Spike on this. I think New England wins, and they win by like anywhere from three to maybe even two touchdowns. Revenge is sweet. <laughs> I think Jacksonville's gonna gonna tear them up. They're gonna run right down their throat. They're gonna shut down their receivers. I think Jacksonville's going to take, just take him to town. They're going to run without Fournette. They're yeah. going to be yeah. able to run it down their throat. Yeah, he's questionable this week. Fournette's if, questionable. If, for, if, if Fournette plays, I think he'll play. All right. So let me ask this as a trivia question because I forgot to before we started picking. Do you know Tom Brady's record against the Jacksonville Jaguars? In his in his entire career, including he's probably playoffs. never lost a game. That is correct. He's eight and zero. Oh, I thought you had a rebuttal to that. I didn't know if you still were. a douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> it's my rebuttal. Yeah, there you go. No, I mean, Jacksonville is not the same team, though. They're they're a completely different team. They've changed more over the past ten years than probably any other team I can think of. I think they're still the legit dark horse contender. Oh yeah. You know, you, you, no one's going to pick them, but if they win, no one's going to be surprised. I I agree. Unfortunately, I have to say this. I agree with Matt's assessment. I think. I think your thought process in week one with Houston being the team that was going to beat New England in a spot that you could find a spot where they would beat them and, and everybody would have you know a whole week of talking heads going, well, New England's done, this is the demise, this is the fall, blah, 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 that they've been doing for, what, five years now? Um, Jacksonville is good. 
And, yeah, you're, you're right. You wanted to talk about my man crush on Blake Bortles. He's not the reason Jacksonville's going to win this game. I, I think that there are spots in this season, and there were spots last season, too, where you know, missing a guy like Julian Edelman's going to hurt. Missing a guy like Danny Amendola, who, yes, we have Chris Hogan. But there's there's times where you see in New England where sometimes shopping in the bargain bin doesn't work. And this is a spot. I think Jacksonville's defense is too good. If Fournette plays, Jacksonville wins the game. So screw the one point. I'll take. There's got to be a plus money on the money line there at that point. So I'll take Jacksonville on the money line and uh, pray that I'm wrong because obviously I don't want to see New England lose a game. But like you said, gun to our head, we got to make a pick sometimes. That should have been my blind bet. Yeah. But either way, uh, Oakland and Denver. Denver is a six point favorite opening up at four and a half, moving to six. Uh, total 46 in this spot. I am finally at my lock of the week. Oh, I, wait, before I tell you that, I should okay. let you know, that this this may be information that you don't know. Yes, let's hear it. A.J. McCarron has been ruled out. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. Thank yes, you. Yes, no problem. Um, I am now of the impression that Gruden using his, what is it, 140-year contract that he's got is going to be, begin a slow rebuilding process which I think means tanking this year. I've got Denver minus six, and I feel really good about that. I don't think Oakland can even keep up at this point. Uh, Denver's defense, while not what it was, is still pretty good, and I actually like what I've seen out of Denver's offense thus far preseason and in game one. Minus Keenum's three interceptions. Well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah but Oakland's never going to get three interceptions this fucking season, let alone one game. Yeah, I think Denver week one, that score was closer than the game indicated. Denver rolls through the Raiders this week. Royce Freeman has a great game on the ground. Well, we might go unanimous on this because Oakland looked like just a big shit show. And I think Denver's just a, last year was a fluke year. You got those same players that were in the Super Bowl. A lot of players were remembered being on a good team. And last year's a bitter taste. They think this is a fresh start. They're going to come out and they're going to lay down the wood. Yeah, it's unanimous. Denver minus six in that spot, so I uh, think we're all on the same page. Uh, John Gruden won't tank. I just don't think he has a good team. I understand what your mindset is, is, you know, go get that number one pick, but, you know, I think John Gruden's pride won't let him do it. Dallas minus three against the Giants Sunday night football. This I feel like every year we get a Dallas and the Giants Sunday night football game. It just I don't know if it's just must-see TV for a lot of people, but... Either way, one way or the other, we got it again. And uh, Dallas is laying three after the egg they laid in uh, Carolina last week. Giants didn't fare much better, but they played a tougher team, in my opinion. Dallas, three points. Yeah, and I like the Dallas minus the three because I I think you're right that uh, Carolina, maybe they're not very good, but if they have any good aspect, it's that defense, especially up the middle. So in this game... Eli stinks. He's thrown more interceptions than anybody else since 2012, except maybe Joe Flacco. i got to relook that up. Uh, I think the Giants are uh, probably fighting for a 5-11 record at best. I'm taking Dallas in this one. Yeah, I like Dallas as well. It's a primetime game, and Jerry rolled. Big conference division game, and... Dallas just runs away with it. Wow. I don't know. I'm going to love this year because I hate Dallas, and I'm going to get to talk shit to so many Dallas Cowboy fans this year. It's going to be so much fun because this team sucks. They lost their two best players, uh, two of their four best players. Zeke's probably their best player. Their quarterback has proven to be average. Their defense is non-existent. Giants' defense is insanely better. Their running back is probably the best running back the NFL is going to have in the next 25 years. Yeah, you, I, remember I, when, you remember when guys were saying, because uh, Bre- Prescott and Goff were drafted in the same year, remember when guys were saying Prescott should have been the number one pick? Yeah, they always talk. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's saying, we'll, we'll see how injuries three, happen. Three years down the line, here we are. Barkley, Barkley's huge. He's so fast. He is just, he's, he's a nightmare. But I think they're going to just stick it to Dallas. Uh, Carolina looked pretty easy to get, get that short stuff, all the runs and everything on Dallas. They didn't have any answers. I don't think they're going to have any this week because they're just an awful team. Yeah, I, I think Dallas is an average team. They got propped up a lot this this off season. Um, 
Dallas wins, Giants cover. It's a one-point game. Yeah, I would definitely take a if – if the spread was three, I would definitely buy the hook and go plus three and a half on the Giants. Fair enough. Let's round it out with Chicago hosting Seattle. If I would have told you this game <laughs> preseason, looking at the rosters, that Chicago would be a three-and-a-half-point favorite, you'd have told me I'm out of my fucking mind. No, I wouldn't have said that. Of course you wouldn't. Yeah. That, that, <laughs> Bullshit. I call. To, Before Khalil Mack, no, I've with been a, Trubisky. I, I've been a believer in Chicago this off season. Yeah, because you've been talking loads about them in the podcast. I have coming out of nowhere with this bullshit. No. I call bullshit. He, 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 I do remember he has mentioned them at least once. It may I've, have just been last week, but when he did speak about them last week, he was you wanna, giving them glowing reviews. Okay, great. You spoke about them six days ago. I believe I wrote that they could win the division in the offseason. I still don't believe they should be a three-and-a-half point favorite at this point. So, Token, I'm going to lead up with you since you're calling me out. I think Chicago wins. I think you're full of shit. (laughs) Go ahead. Sorry. Full of shit. I've taken dumps in your toilet, so. Yeah, now my toilets are full of shit. Yeah. That's Um, a weird thing to say, by the way. (laughs) I know. What kind of comeback is that? (laughs) You're full of shit. Yeah, well, I've taken dumps in your toilet. Give me Chicago in this one. I believe they won by at least one full touchdown, if not two scores. I think Seattle's that bad. Wow, wow. you think Seattle's that bad? Do tell. Seattle is that bad. Mm, no. Okay, fine. You're next. But, I'll pick, but I'm picking them because Chicago's even worse. Because <laughs> Chicago's even worse. <laughs> now, Russell Wilson has turned me into a believer the past couple of years. They have nobody around that guy, and he just he keeps him in contention. And that's just all him. And I think you're going to see the same thing. He just, when the light's on, he's, he's the best player on the field. And that's who wins a lot of football games. So I, I think I think Seattle covers. At the worst, they lose by a field goal. So take the three and a half. I do the same play took as the, the last word, one. Took the words right out of my mouth. I said, Seattle's a better team. And if Chicago somehow wins, it's by a lucky-ass field goal. So, yeah, I'll take the three and a half as well. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm... Not convinced about Seattle being better than Chicago, especially if Doug Baldwin is as hurt as people are saying. I think if that's the case, their best offensive weapon outside of Russell Wilson is, uh, what's his name, that fucking former fourth-string tight end that's been elevated to top-flight receiver for this team. Talking about Disley? Uh, it's whoever I picked up in fantasy. Their so best receiver is Tyler Lockett, even with Doug Baldwin on the field, in my opinion. Uh, anyway, maybe. All right. Well, anyway, I, I, the the point is, uh, I'm I'm going to ride Chicago, especially at home, especially on a Monday night game, because they always do so well at home on Monday exactly. night. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> go with go with proven track record of performance and excellence. Well yes. done. All right. Well, uh, there you have it. That's our picks on all the games uh, for this week in the NFL and. Uh, we're all across the board a little bit on this one. This is a tough week. I thought there were a lot of games, a lot of numbers on this board that were tough to really look at. Uh, uh, there's definitely some good games we'll be watching. New England, Jacksonville, Dallas and Giants. We're going to get that again on Sunday night. I think that Seattle-Chicago game will be pretty good. But uh, either way, uh, there's a lot of good stuff to watch. Hopefully we come back. Uh, when's the next podcast? We'll be recording on Sunday. Hopefully I'll have a nicer track record than you guys will. So yeah. we'll, have to, we'll have to start recording. we we'll have to start uh, putting the, the picks uh, on record on the website at this point. So uh, we'll yeah. get that up here in the next couple days. And uh, So I've got a spreadsheet going, and I'm going to get, for every week, I'm going to do a different tab so we can keep track of who's picking what and how we're doing. Are you doing all of our picks or just yours? All of them, yeah. Oh, okay. So, I, oh, I was, sweet. Were you writing them? Yeah. Oh, nice. no shit. I, I got them all down. Okay. There, there's a couple i got to clarify with you guys, which we can do off the air. but That's fair. All right, we'll, cool. Uh, yeah, we'll start the spreadsheet. That's awesome. Yeah. Damn, look at that. We're watching NFL Network. Look at all the guys injured that may or may not play. Rodgers, Freeman, Fournette, Roethlisberger, and Mariota. That's a, you know. Nobody. That's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of bodies that could be out that could matter in these games. I think all five of those guys will play, though, so it may not matter. All right, well, let's uh, thanks 12 Ounce Sports for airing us, and we want to thank all the guys over at 12 Ounce doing big things. Uh, I want to thank VGK Pop Sockets, and we want to thank Chai Poker for being sponsors of the podcast. Uh, and uh, we will catch you on the next one for Spike, for Token Tony, for Matt, our guest picker this week. And I am Aaron. We will catch you on the next one. We are out. <laughs>